was like, I'll get down in the creek. So you've been shooting again this morning? Yeah, yeah I went down and did some work in a mangrove. All right. Yeah. I went just up this We've invited six fabulous photographers to come and to photograph these the forests of the southeast and that's all around the Eden Chip Mill and they will be selecting their best work to put in an exhibition which will open in uh, Bermagui in June, travelled on to Canberra in August and who knows where next. Hello, I'm Gordon Undy. And I'm Hyatt Smith. John Reed. Judith D. Land. Rob Blakers. And I'm Richard Green. As the photographers still in one place, yeah. and that was amazingly difficult to just, they all wanted to be out there photographing the forest <laughs> and to get them to come at one time was huge. Uh, Richard, you're good. Don't, Richard, don't move, that, you're good where you are. That's it. Where do you want me? Uh, just, just where you are, Hyla. that's great, great, great. That's it, that's it. That's it, that's good, good. Do you want small cameras? More cameras would be great. Okay, Richard, I want you talking to Hyder there. Hyder, no, no, stay where you are. Are you talking across the table? I've got another three or four days, so coming to a place that you're not familiar with, it always takes a little while to become familiar with it. Mm. And so I'll use... Um, you know, I'm just talking to people as much as I can now to get ideas of places to go. So, um, what I'm looking for, the hardest thing in forest campaigns is images of forest, um, you know, which really iconise the forest itself. Because when you're in a forest and you're photographing, it's very hard. Mm. Often the photographs, you know, there's branches and bushes yeah. and there's shrubbery. It's hard to get through. It's hard to get a clear vision. It's hard to get a clear, clear sense of what the forest actually is. Yeah. And so always you're searching for an image um, which will convey in a two-dimensional sense what you're experiencing, you know, in a three-dimensional sense. Yeah. Um, and it just takes a long time. You have to yeah. you know, spend a lot of time. Uh, in my case, I, it has to be walking. I, you know, I just have to get out there walking. Um, and exploring and poking around and sitting and looking and listening and watching yeah. and eventually you come upon things which catch you yeah. and at an intuitive level and then you stop and you it's then a process of refining that and trying to find a composition and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Right. That's it, that's it. That's it, good, good, good. You're kind of, you're, you're kind of the toy of yours, do you? Mm? Tell me what I can find. I did, but I didn't have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to have a photo of yours. I was going to and then at the other end, uh, and that's where I was working this morning, um, is take some photographs in a uh, mangrove patch. Right. Can I image the canopy? Um, uh, how might I get up at canopy level in our forests to sort of get a view that might be seen by a glider possum or um, uh, other creatures that come to life at night time? Um, and of course that been, and then it raised uh, the other uh, thing that I was interested in, can I image the canopy and at night? Um, because uh, there's very few images, I think, of our forests at night. Um, I was faced with some technical problems there. You're probably looking at uh, 10 to 15 second exposure. So you need uh, to keep the camera very still. Um, and there needs to be some moonlight. Um, uh, but... Uh, uh, I was keen to sort of get an image with the stars in the sky and, um, and some uh, uh, observable features of the forest at this level. John, you're getting passionate about the map. Yeah. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it, you've got it. Good, good, good. That's it, that's it. Rock. I was staying in a tent, a big, big uh, uh, army tent actually, um, last night and um, you just stepped out the, uh, out the door and you're in paradise, you know, yeah. and um, and so one doesn't have to go too far at all in order to get some wonderful uh, material for inspirational photographs. Yeah, and it and there's many to be had right here. 
but what mm. I was saying was there's a, there's a huge space. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's, it's, uh, when we're going on a trip, the helicopter is full to the roof, yeah. chopper block full. Yeah. And it ha gives us the advantage that we can camp on site. Yeah. So yeah. that we can be there for good light in the morning yeah. and at night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's it, Certainly makes it a lot easier to take it to get the pictures, but the, the history was that I was I've been into photography for over 60 years now. Okay. And I've been into nature and the environment for over 60 years. The helicopter is a new boy. All right. I only learned to fly 24 years ago. Yeah. And that was in order specifically to be able to go out bush to take photographs. Right. Okay. And so that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years or so. A German helicopter. It's called the Eurocopter EC135. It's got two jet engines, one on the other side, yeah. and it has a very unusual tail rotor. But, um, it can work just more maneuver, not as exposed and vulnerable. It's not as exposed and vulnerable. The helicopter is also particularly maneuverable because it's got a type of rotor head called a fixed rotor head, oh, yeah. uh, which gives a lot of um, pilot control. Very oh. specific. Very uh, precise control right yeah and um, for five years it was the only one of its type in the country right. there are now I believe eight others right that are being used by the um, rescue services and the police okay well, we were up this morning we're taking photographs this morning okay yeah. and uh, judging by the light we might be up again uh, as the sun setting oh good yeah. see what, whether we can get anything decent yeah. Right. Good, good. Right. Okay, now everybody looking at me. That's it. That's it. Very nice, very nice. Do a national park. That's good. Right. That's good. Dude, at me. Everyone, at me. That's it. That's it. Smiling. Smiling, smiling, smiling. That's it. That's it. Good, good. You know, old growth forest is messy, and that's great because it's full of life and full of biodiversity, all those microbes, all those fungi, yeah, uh, yeah. all those things that you don't find in a forest that's been logged and burned. So we don't know what sort of cures, the, yeah. the chemicals of some of the fungi and things have got yeah. scientists really interested, but if we, we don't even know how, most, a lot of the fungi down there. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're identifying new species all the time, but if we, if we keep trashing the place, we'll lose them yeah, and we'll, yeah. we might lose a whole lot of interesting science with them. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's I hope, right. you, hope your um, camera comes up to uh, <laughs> ah, thank comes you. up with the goods. Yeah. Oh, I like the cannon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. man. Then, yeah, see, this is. We should be doing things with it. I, I, I think this is going to be the, the right camera. Yeah. So where did you get for a lot of people? Yeah. Uh, including <laughs> someone like me. I think uh, for sort of most photographers, video. most photographers would like this as a, as a second camera. Absolutely. Because yes. it's so immediate, uh, you know, you don't have to try yeah. anything. And, and, eventually, uh, and also, on because road, it video. has only one it's fixed it's lens, it doesn't give you any options. And yep. you, you, it means you're more decisive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fabulous. You're going to use this one this, this time? Uh, I'm using this one, yeah. just purely for black and white, and I use my oh, Nikon nice for colour. Um, oh, right. And the forests are just yeah. unbelievable. They have snooze. Yeah. Yeah. just so beautiful. Hello. Um, Hello. They make you, they renew everything Hello. within you. Hello. They're just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And all, one can go down to the little details, whether it's a little mushroom or a toadstool or um, some tiny little insects. It is just unbelievable. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Do you want one that way, closer in or further away? And, and they can't make a decision, and by the time they made a decision... Yeah. This is, whereas this is, this is what I use yeah. almost all the time. Right, OK. It's non-digital, yeah. but I think of it as about a 20 gigapixel camera. OK. Yes. But uh, now it's 8x10 it's film. Camera. Right, eight by ten. And I shoot mostly really black and white with that. Oh, black and white. Yeah, yeah I haven't shot colour for fifteen years. All right. Yeah, yeah, it looks very nice because it's my passion. What's the name? What's it? It's an ebony. It makes the camera, but the design is essentially a uh, hundred years old. Yeah, there's nothing new about the design. Uh, you can put new lenses on it or old lenses on it. They just come off on a board. So. Right. 
but it's uh, it's my passion. It's what I do. Uh, in the final analysis, it, you know, I don't think the people people in the cities, and I'm a city dweller. Yeah. I don't think we really understand what's happening. Yeah. I don't think we have any any idea of the extent to which this damage. And I saw a map last night showing, like they're showing the areas which were national park and the areas which had been logged and, and wood chipped and whatever. And, and if, if people in the city could see that, yes. they would understand the extent of this problem. It's huge. And I never realised how much day and night patrolling forests, going out, actually giving their own time, photographing, writing, doing all sorts of things, and somehow or other this has to get out. And you know, I'm not a green activist. I'm just here because I'm a photographer and I know these people. But uh, in the end, without them, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. And to think, to, to think that some of those wonderful trees end up like toilet in toilet paper, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can't get your head around it, can yeah. you? Is uh, about nature. Mm. It just yeah. inspires us. And yeah. these these beautiful temperate forests that we have down here inspire so many artists. It inspires tourists. It inspires tourism. And it just shows the way of the future is not about quarrying our land yeah. for logs, for trees for anything, but it's to value our land and value our forests. We've got squash up with a tip. That's good. Here we go, looking at me. That's it, that's it. Nice. Great. And again. That's nice, very nice. Good, good, good. Good. Great. Thank you.